Yes. Hello, and welcome to Hexen Beyond Heretic, part 5 of my first playthrough on Very Hard. Ugh. We did do much last night. I was exceptionally tired, and I'm feeling a bit better now, though my throat is a little sore. So I'm not sure whether it's a cold or whether it's just like, I don't know. But anyway, it shouldn't impede me as much as it was last night. I really wasn't feeling in the mood to put up with Hexen's unique way of doing things. <clears throat> anyway, and also, please excuse any coughing. I will try to keep it to a minimum. It's not too bad. Um, all that aside, yes, last time... We were spending our time running around and getting these little crystals. Uh, this one was the one which was the save which I was up to because I had saved it as doors in front because after having gone through all the previous areas, I'll just do a save Hexen part five. And there, so that my quick save is on a new save file. We were trying to get into this area here, where all these guys are running around in. And I don't know how to get in there. So, I'm going to have to have a look around for a switch or something. I mean, the side area here is open, but that's not open. And then, there's this here. And there's this here. Then they don't open when I use them or bump into them. And there's this one over the other side. So, something somewhere must open those. As I said, I've been going through the levels and I've been picking up these gems. You see the sapphire here, this ruby here, and there's probably a few others in my inventory. Yeah, I've got two sapphires and one ruby. A number of these have been going into this. Obviously, this is the goal for the level, to put all the gems into this object. However, I cannot use these here. I believe my assumption here is that I have to use them in a specific order. But I can't use any of the three which I have. I've gotten two so far. I got those two green gems. The red gem was already in here. So... I didn't have to worry about that. There is three more slots on this, I think. Uh, let me see. One, two, uh... Yeah, there's three more slots. There's one here. There's one here. And there's one here. So... <clears throat> pardon me. Obviously, I mean... Yeah, I have three gems. And... I, I don't... I'm pretty sure they're not working. Do I have to use them on the slots? I doubt it. As far as I understand, this would just be one big use wall. So, and it should use them automatically from my inventory if I have them to use them. So, I don't know. Um, I'm I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm guessing that there maybe is one other gem which I have because I assu I'm assuming I have to put them in there in order. But, uh... It seems straightforward, but... Oh, hum. If it takes too long and I don't actually solve this, then I will look it up. Because I would prefer not to be stuck on this for the entire session. We've put, we've pressed this. This just lowers these platforms here to get into this corridor down here, which is how I originally got in there. This is where I got part of the Blood Scourge, the fourth weapon here. Uh, this leads back out to the courtyard here. He just spawned in, so he's nothing special. Uh, that's back up to the beginning. I don't think anything would have changed up near the beginning. I can't see anything on the map. As far as I know, if something changes on the map, you could see it, even if you haven't specifically gone there to look at it. Uh, no. 
There's nothing here. So. And there's no switches up here either? Nope. Ah. All damage. There's two switch there's two levers which you might be able to see up there. Uh I've pulled those. Those lower this section of wall here on either side. And there was items on top of them. And when you go up to that spot there, there's nothing up there. It's just a little alcove. So. As far as I know, there's nothing up in these two sections here. That's just where some monsters were. Uh, what else? This just leads up to those parts here. Here, I'll show this. So you pull that, and this drops down. There was items on here, and if I ride this all the way up, we can see there's nothing there. So. Uh, hmm. There's nothing up the back here. There's this little section here, but I can't get in there, and there's actually items in there, so I assume this drops down at some point. <coughs> This little bit here. This is actually kind of interesting. This area here actually opens up every now and then. Uh, I think it takes like... I forget how many seconds it takes. Like two minutes maybe? For it to open up. And there will be some enemies in there. And some items. And if you get the items quickly. Uh, you have to get the items before they uh, despawn. There is some ammunition in there. See whether I can get that. Okay. And you can open up. Open it up. Before as well. Um. Hmm. Uh, right. There's nothing there. I pulled all those switches. <coughs> Pardon me. I think about the only other place I can check is in the various levels. Which I already have done. One of the levels is exceptionally short. If this is it? No. This is the uh, Silent Refectory. Or Dining Room. So, I mean these boxes have some switches behind them, but I think I've pulled all of them. Uh, yes, there's one there. That lowers this, which goes into this area. I don't, did I get it behind the wall there? No, I didn't. Okay. Well, we can do that. We can try that. Uh, how do I get be in there? Or did I? I might have actually gotten in there. But I have full of those discs of repulsion. So. Hmm. Uh, anything over here? Pulled that. The uh, rock on a rope lever go is down when you've used it. Uh, just crawl through there. It's not cheating. There was just a door there. I just did it to be a bit faster. Also because I could, but I won't cheat like that. Right. This is in here. So I've been in here. I pulled that lever. I think that just spawned... No, I can't remember what that did, actually. Uh, right. Let's break these pots. Can't break the barrels. Those are some quality barrels. And we have these push walls here. Which amused me a lot last time. Uh, they're apparently a thing, just not something people use too often. Ugh. Huh. Right, sorry. Um. Hmm. There's another one there. You see, they like both connect up this room here. I think there was a gem there. These side areas really aren't that big compared to, uh,. Hub 1 and Hub 2. Actually kind of interesting how those boxes are angled different, differently.
Um. There was another one in there. Uh, hmm. There's that portal there, but I've been through there. I think that just leads out of here. Yep. That just leads out. So. Uh, hmm. <clears throat> What's that? Oh, they're just... Um, they're just pillars which were blocking that off, so... They've retracted into the roof. I think they're... And this is another area in here, the uh, Orchard of Lamentations. This area also is quite small. It's a bit there, which you can see, but that, as far as I know, would lead nowhere because the only way I could get, I could even close to getting in there, even though I can't eat when I'm doing it, is crouching, and crouching is a no-go. Right, there was a amulet of warding up there, and there was a blue gem up there. Hmm. So, again, as I said, this level is really quite small. There's these two paths leading off here. These are actually teleports. Like, right there, I teleported over to this side here. If I go back through and go through the other one, I get teleported again, and I will be in the other area there. I was over there beforehand. Um, behind this wall. So, yes, I got both of the items there. I actually have 100% kills on this. That's pretty cool. Um, until an enemy spawns in. Right, now there's this area here. As far as I know, I've seen everything here. This area is a pain. You have to move quickly, otherwise you get crushed against the roof. I will go into all of the sections around here. As far as I know, there's only one lever in each of the areas, except for the rearmost area. This one here, where there was another one to open up that area in the middle. That one, which I've already pulled. And... here. And now I'll go into the center. Right, and there was this switch here, which did something. And there's this one just to lower them again. So, oh, no. Not something there. No. I doubt there would be anything hidden behind a wall, which looks exactly the same as everything else. You just appeared out of nowhere. Kind of gave me a surprise. <sighs> oh, there's another one over there. Six. Four enemies spawned out of nowhere? That's interesting. I thought only one enemy spawned every minute. Hmm. Oh, there you are. I love how his blood's flying all the way over there. Um, right. This is where another gem was. There was a green one up here. Uh, hmm. I don't think I could jump over to there. I don't think... What would be the purpose? There's nothing over there, so... I mean, I probably could, but... There we go. And over to that platform. Right. And there's nothing along here. No. You could possibly jump from here up to there. Yes. I think you could have jumped up from here down to there. But... Eh. <clears throat> A bit of a non-linear level if you were... Good enough at parkouring. Um, hmm. Right. So, I, I'm at a loss. Uh, 
Is that the... There should be three levels, actually. Have I gone into three levels? There's the silent refractory. I heard a creature spawn. Yeah, there you are. There was the silent refractory. There was the, uh... Level which we're just in. The orchard of... Um... Misery or something. So that one... And then there's that one. No, the, the, this one here. I assume there's another level behind here, but I haven't gotten to it. I can't get to it. Why can't I get to it? <coughs> hmm. Uh, hmm. There's nothing up with this pulpit. There's nothing on any of these pillars, as far as I know. Nothing's standing out to me. Hmm. I can see some areas up the top there. You might be able to see there's a wall here and a wall there. Which don't make sense with the uh, geometry of the level. So, I assume actually there is something behind there. But how would I open that? Like, behind there, I assume there's something... How do I get that? Do I have to do something with these? I doubt it. I don't think I have to break anything. There's this, I can't get in there. Oh! Yeah, as I said, the monsters spawn from in this. Oh, there's a, uh, Crater of Might. That's pretty cool. There's no switches in here. <clears throat> if I stand on this... I don't have to shoot those walls, so... Fun, fun, fun. Uh, no, I've shot them before. And that. That. Okay. Like, I feel my next step is to somehow open this up. But... I assume that opens up when you figure out that, but... Bleh. Well, fine. Right, what's this called? Heresy Arch Seminary. I am going to look up on the wiki. Because I've spent quite- I've spent like an hour last night, and here we go again. Uh, Hexen... Okay. <coughs> okay, fine, fine. You appear in a room, Corax, blah blah blah. When you tell us that, into the big cathedral, yeah, sure. You want to go uh, pulling, yeah, da 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 da. Okay. It says I should have a total of five planets. Two sapphires, two emeralds, and one ruby. <coughs> well, I do. And put all the planets I found there. Each of them have a specific place, so just keep trying to placing each of them into each of the holes. But do I actually have to look at the holes to put them in? I thought I'd just have to... Oh, you... You stupid sort of a game. <laughs> Why be so specific? Why don't just have the whole thing as an activation center? Ah, oh. That is needlessly... I thought I'd broken it because of the game. I thought I was going to read, like, down in the tips, like, you know, 
Oh, make sure that you collect all the gems and try to put them in at the end, otherwise it bugs out. You can't, once you place two of them, you can't place the other three or something like that. But oh, it has to be so specifically in those spots rather than the whole wall. I've got to take issue with that game. I'm sorry. <clears throat> ah, fine. Okay, well, we've got that done. Now, from the bit I read, two walls, dragon walls, should have opened up back, back here. Maybe. There we go. And there's wizards. Okay, well, we're making progress now. That was extremely irritating. Ah. I mean, the other two just put in when I was staring at it. I must have been staring at the spots where they needed to go, but... Like, really? It, the other ones which I put in, it seemed like I just stared at it, and it used them automatically and put them into the right spots for me. I didn't actually have to focus on a specific spot to put them in. Raza Raza, come on, game. Uh... So apparently you can put them in in whatever order you want. Uh, uh, oh, a minute's up. Can we see the slaughter halls there? They're the ones with their putting their shields up and firing shots at the mages. They look exactly the same as the normal centaurs, but they fire shots at you. And I think they have a they have like 15 more health. Okay, that's the next part which we have to do in there, which we just saw. Uh, what? Oh, there's a mage. Hello. Yep, well done. Okay, now, this is the next area. There's a part after that part which we just did. Are those doors over there opened? I want to have a look. No, okay, fine. That's something later on. Right, now we have this. <coughs> Pardon me. Right, now. This is like... Yeah, there's a portal in each of these rocks here. I think this is like, there's, from, from the wiki that I read, there's like these three portals to three levels. And each of them is like a different chapel. There's like a chapel of the wolf, chapel of the griffin, chapel of the dragon. And we have here these, uh, let me see, nine alcoves. That means that each of these chapels, there is three levers which we have to pull. And I was saying these levels seemed rather short. So, I at least know what I'm searching for, though I would have found eventually. Uh, let's go into the wolf first. Wolf Chapel. Right. That leads into Dragon Chapel. Oh, we could just like swap between the various areas as we want. Hmm. Why aren't you sticking on him? The lightning's supposed to stick on the enemy for like three minutes. Oh, uh, three seconds. Three minutes. Yes, he'll kill him for three minutes. Lightning's nice. I can shoot it through walls. Or th shoot it through the gates pretty easily. No, lightning's better against these because they put their shields up. Ow! I would like some more health, please. And armor. I have one AC again. Okay. Can't open that. <clears throat> This is supposed to be all representing the uh, religion that Korax has set up to, I suppose, control the populace or whatever. Damn it. Ow. I'm gonna be careful with this because I, yeah. Sometimes I, I, I read that they can be a quick shot with their uh, bullets and sometimes catch people out they're firing at them like they fire as soon as they're able to uh, even if they've just had their shield up okay we can't go in there oh there's a door wizard 
and there's a lever in there. There we go. That door stays open. Okay. Pull that. That'll probably open one of the doors around here. This one? Oh. Hmm. This one. Hello. They make a they make a, a horse snort noise. Ow. Just sit back. They like firing their fireballs. All oh, right. <clears throat> I can't use the blood scourge. I was trying to switch to that because the blood scourge uses both ammunition, and since I've run out of green mana, I cannot actually use the blood scourge. Oh, whoop! You will go the same way as all of your compatriots. There we go. Ooh, hello. There's one behind you too. Aha! Piercing shots. Thank you for these quartz flasks. I could actually use one of my mystic urns. That would be a, perhaps a bit better. There we go. I'll pull that. One ninth of the puzzle has been solved. Oh joy. But well, we know what that's doing, so. That's lighting up those little black elcos we saw earlier outside of the portals for this area. Is it similar to the ones which we were pulling for the second hub? Where we saw like the um you know the swamp symbol cave symbol and whatever else inside those little L codes in front of the door. It's the same deal. Hey, green mana. Oh, how? Nearly shot me a few times there. I'm lucky that the shots actually were hitting the wall and not me. Okay. Uh, right. Now, I think we've done everything we can in there. Hmm. Has that opened up back here? Or is that because that's got a grating on it? Oh, it's because it's got a grating on it. Okay, there's two other switches in this area. So there's three switches in, or three levers in each of these different chapels. <coughs> Is that door there open? Uh, no. Okay. Let us leave this place. And... Right, we see this one's open. Cool. Now, we'll go into the dragon apple and we'll see what awaits us here ah. ow oh pff. they were just like descended from above Behind him, there we go. 
I'm going to use one of my Mystic Urns, because I have eight of them. Mystic Urns are a full heal. There we go. Now. I just clip him. Yeah. Ah, I can get you. I saw his head. Okay, let's save. Ow. Shock me. Ow. Slaughter. There we go. There's another one up there. Where did I'm up in spots like that is? Kind of annoying game. Oop, wizard in the hole. Oop, and there's a, uh... Oh, there's a swamp creature in there. Oh, I thought actually they were green serpents in that hole. But there's a green serpent, and there's another one. And I died. Oh, hum. Get you and you. Yeah, I can't hit him when I'm right in front of the wall like that. The uh, lightning actually travels up and hits him. It's very useful like that. There we go. And up there. Ah, I'm out of green mana. Arr. Ooh. Uh-oh. Wizards have come. Green serpents. Oh. Hey, good. Good. Oh, there's a uh, Mr. Gurn over there. We can recoup our losses from the one which I used. Okay, good. I have eight again. There we go. Uh, you're not dead yet. Got you. You're not dead still. Hey, good. You're dead now. Wizards. Yep, you're all frozen. Oh, 
green matter. Yum, give me. Ow, ow. Oh, Forget the small tool. That name is very clever, game. How many shots does it take? The lightning sometimes doesn't seem to actually uh, stick on them. <clears throat> okay, there we go. That's what, another one ninth, so that's two, two out of nine. Um, okay, three out of nine. Rollers. As I said, there's three of those levers in each of these uh, side chapels. And the lightning seems to have problems actually hitting enemies when they're really close to a wall. Like, it tries to hit them and then it moves a bit too far and it hits the wall and it dissipates. Hmm. Okay, good. Oh. There's nothing there. Okay. Save and I can't get through there. No. That just crush me. Hmm. That seems to drop as soon as you start shooting it. Oh no, the water just goes up and down. Ow, they hurt so much. <clears throat> it's like the developers knew they're giving me a lot of quartz flasks. It's like, sorry. How does that work? Magic. Okay, water, please come down. There we go. Up. Okay, now what? I need to go through this area. I can't. Oh. It just spawned in behind me. Hmm. Oh, careful. Can I lower these? This? No. What about these? No. I like all the torches, or the candles on that. It looks quite good. Um, hmm. Well, we've pulled two switches in here, so we've got three, three, three ninths or four ninths done. I don't remember. Oh well, let's go to the Griffin area. Actually, hang on, check that. We'll go back here, right? And we see we've got two of the uh, dragon ones done. There's one more dragon one. Yep. Okay. See those uh, 
efforts were in the pot. It's like that wizard who was in a pot at one point. I don't know what he was doing in there. It's actually a practical joke. When one of his fellow wizards would get a drink, he would pop out. Kaha! You thought it was a drink, but it's in fact me. Okay. I haven't used that much yet. I haven't found a really good a spot to... Uh, I, I, I keep forgetting about it, honestly. And you. One night that the puzzle has been solved. Wait. Ow. Just going to that spot? I didn't pull any levers. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Oh. What wonder why the developers decided to do no secrets in this. I think there is some secrets in later levels. But. I don't know. Maybe they thought the secrets would be too difficult to confuse, too hard, would be too easy to confuse with the rest of the game, but... The Slorsitors, when they're firing at you, they have their shield up. However, when they have their shield up to fire at you, they are not actually protecting themselves. Even though the animation is exactly the same. But the only difference between the two shots is... Uh, the, between the two uh, animations is that sometimes... It, it, one of them, they uh, flash. Is that another part of the blood scourge there? But I already have all three parts. Okay. Suppose in case you missed it. So that part for the blood scourge in the other area was unnecessary. Nope. Oh. Etheral Bridge appeared. Hmm. I'll do a save. And if you'll excuse me, I'm just gonna have a short break. Back in a moment.
Righto, now where were we up to? Uh, right. Oh, you spawned in. Uh, this bridge. Okay, so go along here. Okay, there's. Let's uh, retreat for the bit. It was these efforts from afar. There's no reason to fight them out there in the pit where they can surround me and shoot me from all sides. There we go. That all. I do like the look of the Afrits. There we go. Okay, and there's a button there that opens that door over there. Full green banner. Yay. Where'd that teleport me to? Oh, okay. A little corner of that room with of that pillow over. Okay. We are moving walls. Oh, I see. It's gonna be like a, a squish maze. have to rush that fast bit. But the items distracted me. Just retreat for a bit. There we go. Oop. Run! Yay. Woo. Okay, there we go. That wasn't too hard. <clears throat> Some of the puzzles in this have been actually rather interesting. What do I do here? How do I get back? Oh, this whole thing's deactivated. Okay. What'd that do? Okay. And there's another one? Yes. Okay. Oh, there's a portal there. Does that lead me back to that room? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, well, I assume some of those leave some of those buttons I just pressed opened these areas. No, they did not. Hmm. Well, what did they do? I've just pressed four buttons, and I'm at a loss at what they did. Did they raise like four individual stairs somewhere? Hmm. How? Oh, where'd you come from? Did they open when I went down those stairs? N no. Oh, you were in there. Okay. Wait. Aha! You see, there's a little, um... This... Symbol on the wall. You can see there's a griffin there. But the difference between them... This one has a purple one on it. This one has just normal. So. so far, the uh, purple ones have been walls which you can activate. It's a very minor difference, but it stands out well enough, I suppose. <coughs> uh. Oh, this one. There we go. And we don't need those 
discs of repulsion. So the whole point of that was, well, I did pull another lever. So that makes it two in here, does it? Let's go out and check. So I can keep track. Okay, we have two of the dragons, one of the wolf, and we have all three of the griffins. Right, I, I want to check one other thing also, because there's a secret level in each of these parts. And I would like to know how I could get to it, because last time I missed out on the secret level. Uh, in the first hub, in the second hub I found it, but... Is it this? No. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I see. Uh, it activates after you defeat the boss. Let's just go over here to the dragon area and get this health. <laughs> okay. Now. Oh, I see the blue area's opened up over here. There's nothing in there. Oh, that's moved. Previously, they were both in the same spot. I wonder what did that. Okay, and... I'm gonna keep my lightning ready in case there's a uh, slaughter behind it up here. No, but there's some guys over there. Get rid of that mage. The mages are kind of a threat. I mean, their shots individually don't do too much damage. And you're not likely to stand there and take the full, like, full, full array of shots from them. Because, you know, when you get hit, you tend to reflexively dart to the side. Okay, that's another button, so that's all three. And that bit there's opened up now. Okay. And there. Oh. Ow. Thank you. I just love bolts of magic to my face. I do it actually. Hiding them in Elko's above me. Careful! Yeah. I thought that would happen as soon as I started backing up the stairs. I was like, there's gonna be guys behind me, isn't there? Uh, right. There's no switch up here. Can I get up there? I can't. More blue mana. I need to use my uh, frost shards more often. Okay. And there's nothing up here. Okay, I assume that's this entire area. Let me have a look down in this. We're going to fall damage. Apparently this does move when you shoot. Yeah. The mage over there. Come on. Come on, magey magey. Ah. Hmm. How do 
I get up there? You have to shoot that to raise and lower it. Apparently. Okay. Um. Hmm. Is he shooting me from down there still? Does this move? Uh, well, there's got to be a passage over there, maybe. Ah, <clears throat> that's open now. Okay. And you. You. Right. Ooh, there's a bunch of uh, quartz flasks here. And another ninth has been solved. Okay, so we needed to do that anyway. I'm glad that I bothered. Okay, we got a crater of might as well. That's nice. And we'll exit. And we should have all three of the dragon. Yes, we do. Now, we just need to uh, do the other two of the wolf, which apparently you can do all of them at once. Now that's open. Okay, fine. I don't know. Careful. <laughs> they broke through the roof. Haha. Uh -huh. That was neat. <laughs> and again. The uh, game. That's pretty fun. Uh, right. Health! Lovely health. There's no switch behind that corner? Nope. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, piercing shots! Everything dies if they're in a... if they're in a narrow mine. Uh. Head health. That was nice. I actually travelled from one enemy to the other there. Yeah. He just spawned in. Oh, interesting. There's like a amphitheater here. That's neat. And there's a symbol of, I assume, uh, what's it called down on the floor? Borax. like that. Craters of Might give you a full of both mana.
Oh. Okay, that was... That apparently was one ninth <coughs> to go into those two areas. Oh. This has risen up, okay. Ooh, that actually travels through targets. That's pretty cool. Okay, the Blood Scourge actually clears them up pretty well. But still, as projectiles do get stuck on walls, and it's like if they hit the walls, they just disappear. So. <sighs> Pick up another crater of might. Yay. And any more green mana. Be very nice. Again, I like the level design in the, in the Heretic and Hexen. It's got a lot of theme to it. Which I do like over Doom's sort of kind of more abstract way of doing things. Uh, right. Ooh, that's interesting. That's like something you'd see in a wake. There we go. How are we doing for time? Yeah, fine. Careful, there's guys behind me. And. Hello? Wizards! I kind of wish this thing was hit scan. It would make my life easier. Because <clears throat> I can fire around corners much better. Sadly it's not. The Elven Wand, which uh, the protagonist in Her Heretic was hit scan, and it was extremely useful for sniping enemies across the map because it was pinpoint accuracy. This is also pinpoint accurate, and it doesn't deviate no matter how many times you fire it in a row. However, because it is a projectile, it means it gets caught on corners and... Like, the shot's wider. Like, I'm firing here, and it's getting hit in the door frame. Whereas, if I fire it slightly over to the left, then it, I have to fire it, like, there for it to actually clear the door frame. Little things, but I, f I, f I feel often that... This is not a uh, hit scan weapon. When I'm trying to use it, because it means I have to stand more exposed in the doorway, it does make it a bit more even for the enemies, but I'm not playing this game to be on even footing with the enemies. I'm playing this game to be a badass. Kick their butt. Fire. And this is our fire room. This is where we keep the fire. How we harvest fresh fire here every day? Uh. Yes. <laughs> yes, Etten. Go and attack the wizard who hit you with his bolt. He's more of a threat than I am. Right. Uh, hmm. what was the point of all this? Okay, there's another room here. Can wizards? I wonder what makes these chapels uh, relevant to their respective creature. What makes this particular? What makes this chapel wolfy? 
Hmm. One ninth. Here, yeah. wizard. A wizard, Wolfie. You got a hit on me. Does that one actually go up? It does. <coughs> oh, and there's a uh, icon of the defender there. That is invincibility. That's pretty nice. Is it invincibility? Actually, it changes depending on the class. Uh, I believe for me, it is actually a uh, repel all projectiles being fired at me for a while. So not te not. So technically not invincibility, because I assume melee attacks still hurt me. For, some of the, for one of the other classes, I think it is invincibility. Or maybe both of the other classes? I can't remember. Maybe the other classes being the Warwick and Warrior and the Cleric. Right, let me exit here. And I'll just go check and see how many more we've got. Have we got one more to do for this? I feel like we do. Wait, that was a wrong portal. Oh, we have them all active. Huzzah! Let me just check and see whether I missed any other areas. Uh, any rooms which I might have overlooked? No, doesn't look like it. Okay, cool. Right, we've activated all those switches. That did take too long. Now the boss should have spawned. Let me get my icon of the defender ready. I think that was him there. I believe he's called the Heresy Arc. He's probably a massive wizard. There he is! Yes he is! I recognize that. That was used as one of the enemies in uh, Demon's Steel. I think the replacement of the... Uh, what's it called? Spider Mastermind. Anyway, I got a defender. You can't hurt me. Come on, hit me with your best shot. Oh, he's got purple mana. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, he's reflecting my shots. Is that hurting you? I can't tell. You're not going, ugh. Ow. Oh, there, that hurts you. I heard you go, ugh, there. Oh, when, only when he's not channeling? Fine. Move on. Uh, there we go. Good thing I've got all those craters. I'm going to need to use my green mana. Because he's <coughs> interval where he's vulnerable. If it's not, if it's when he's not firing, it's very short. Yeah, there. See, he's basically always shooting. Oh, it's not? Sometimes he is, sometimes he isn't, I don't know. Yeah, don't get killed by my own attacks. That would be dumb. Okay. Uh, retreat for the moment. Crater, there we go. Hello. I just hit you with this, because this doesn't reflect. Hello! Welcome. We're playing Hexen Beyond Heretic, and we're currently fighting the Heresy Arc, a boss on the third hub. Am I playing on an emulator? Yes, I am playing Her Heretic, uh, Hexen in GZM Doom. I tend to play all the uh, games I play on this channel in GZ Doom if they will run on it. Just for convenience sake. 
and it's got all of its niceties which it adds. Oh, he tried to summon a wizard there, but he's died. Don't summon wizards! Oh, he's actually like summoning wizards very frequently now. Interesting. Get out of it. Stop summoning wizards! I think we've hurt him a bit. bit. He's doing something different than what he was before. Interesting boss. I like his multiple different spells and abilities. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Those bouncing fireballs. <laughs> it's so dumb. Uh. I apologize for any coughing and that I have maybe a bit of a cold. Oh, I only have nine hit points. Uh, there we go. And there. I could use a crater. Oh, hey, you don't. See ya. Ow! Oh, he reflects them and they come. <laughs> what did it say? Had his bones rolled by the higher heresy arc. <laughs> Okay, fine. <sighs> well, the icon of the defender didn't prove to be very useful. <clears throat> oh, leave me alone. I'm accessing my inventory. That means that don't hurt me, period. Right. I do have this, and I haven't used this yet. This summons a... Ooh. Thank you. Three quartz flasks. That's pretty good. Oh, there you are. I think this is actually the first proper boss fight we've had in the game. Two previous hubs I don't think actually had boss fights in them. Yeah, right, let's summon our Molotor ally. Aha! Eat Molotor. I'm kind of sad they're not enemies in this game. It doesn't seem like they are. I enjoyed fighting them in the original. Oh, can I just hit you in melee? Was this? Because that's not a projectile. But you probably only take damage at certain points, so. Blech. He is only attacking me. Oh, did he kill my Molotor? He killed my Molotor. I didn't even give him a name. I called him Morley. Oh. Stop with the bouncy balls. I like your magic though. Perhaps I could have had some abilities like that. Oh, that would be neat. Defeat the boss and you get like an item based on their attack. That would be cool. Like a big purple wave. Seeing that he's got like a purple object above his head, it is possible they thought of giving you more weapons per class. But, I don't know. I think we might have seen this character previous, uh, short for a short period in the uh, cinematic at the end of Heretic. Freaking wizards! Okay, uh, let's use... No, not Fletcher's. Aha, you can't hurt me now. Well, you can if you attack me in melee, but you're not smart enough for that. The icon of the defender for the uh, mage, which is what I'm playing as, reflects all projectiles fired at me. 
for a period of time. I'll just focus on you, actually. Oh, it's running out. It's not actually invincibility, I don't think. Uh, I believe if I got hit in melee, it wouldn't work. But none of these guys have melee attacks, so... Okay. Uh, time for a crater. There we go. Where is he? There he is. So many wizards! Get out of here! <clears throat> Stop summoning... Wizards. No! Uh. And you. I'm glad I hoarded all of my items. This boss is actually proving to be rather obstinate. Another crater. There we go. And come on. How much more health have you got? I just hit like an Etten. <laughs> Out of quartz flasks. I'm gonna have to start going into my uh what's it called? Mystic urns. I should actually save some items because I believe I have a secret level to do after this. So, maybe that's their plan. Maybe they think, haha, you'll be so, they'll be so tired after doing the boss. done yet. I don't know how to, what, what difference there is in him being vulnerable or not. It seems maybe when he's not casting spells, but basically always casting spells. That's probably a difficulty thing. Come on. Is this bullet hell? <laughs> Uh, 
Ow. Obviously not, because I'm getting hit multiple times. Well, that's my last healing item. I'm going to use a crater. I'm going to use another icon of the defender. And eat this. There he goes. <laughs> Was that a cork pop noise when he died? Place is shaking. Well, that was a satisfying end. Hmm. Good boss fight overall, I have to say. I like that. He had multiple different attacks. He could reflect my shots, which made it quite difficult for me. I wonder if it's actually he's invincible and he reflects shots, or he's just reflecting my shots. Would it be easier to play as a warrior or something with a melee attack and be able to smack him? Hmm. These areas are open now. Because as a mage, I assume possibly I'm at a disadvantage because most of my attacks are projectile based and he can reflect all of them. Except for this, my sapphire wand. Because even though this is a projectile, it's not able it's not able to be reflected. Okay. And that is the secret level, I believe. So we'll do a save. <clears throat> Look at all those dead wizards. Look at that dead heresy arc. It's just a part of clothes. Uh. Oh, did this area back here open? No. Oh, there is a uh, hole there. Oh. Like opens and closes. This is interesting. There's a portal in there. Right. Wait. Hang on. Okay. So maybe this. Is this the end of this area? <coughs> Pardon me. I think that might be the end of the hub over there. Aha. Uh -huh. Hello. Okay. Okay. Uh, lower again, please. Because I'd like to get in there. Come on. Lower, 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 lower. Thank you. Ow! Slaughter! Get out of here. Okay. Oh. Uh, jumping is allowed in Hexen, though ducking is not. That was a fair way. And there's full damage. So. <sighs> well, that's a cool effect. Then they raise up again, then when they connect, this slows down. Yep. Okay. And let's go through. Now we're in Deathwind Chapel. This is the secret level, which we actually worked towards in the previous two hubs. There was two things which we had to do in the previous hubs, or well, one in each of the previous hubs to unlock this. In the first hub, we had to finish the secret level. There was a invisible uh, line death, which activated like I suppose the first part of this level, uh, this this entrance, entrance to here. <clears throat> in the second hob, there was the secret level there, and in that we had to pull a lever, which activated fully being able to access this. So.
I kind of wish it was a lever for both of them, because you finish the, the secret level in the first one and you don't realise that that is important because it doesn't say anything. Uh, this game is... well, I'm enjoying the gameplay. Uh, sometimes it's a bit obtuse with some of the things. A lot of it is pulling switches, which is not... It's not difficult, it's just figuring out, you know, what did what. Which so far is not been terrible, it's kind of self-explanatory for the most part. It's like, oh this switch solved, you know, one ninth of this puzzle. <clears throat> sometimes it's obtuse, yes, I'm going to say sometimes it's obtuse. The switches are annoying, to a degree. I'm trying to be fair with, fair to the game. The switches are... Is it the best way they could have done things? No. I think they could have done things, mixed it up a bit more than just have switches. The messages you get when you pull the switches could be better. It does say something happened in the hub area, which, you know, it's fine, okay. But it, you have to sort of connect the dots yourself, like, oh, this is one night to this puzzle, which means... Uh, this panel over here in this hub area lit up, and I have to do that eight more times. Maybe if the switches looked different to make them stand out a bit more, rather than just all being like this in the, the, this area, at least. Um, <laughs> I melted. If I go back, uh, if when we go back to the main area. There was the uh, planetarium, which, or whatever it is, which I was putting the gems into, which I would, again, like to uh, point out the issue with that, because I was stuck on that last night, and that is a case where I think the game could have been improved. Uh, specifically, rather than, you know, variation in the levers, because the levers are, I don't know, eh. I feel the game isn't really as obtuse as people make it out to be, but at the same time, it is sort of looking around sometimes for what did this lever do? So. But I mean, I've been fumbling my way around it. It's just, I think some things could be labelled a bit better. I don't have any healing items because I just spent them all on the boss. Ugh. I've, I've said a few times also, uh, perhaps to the advantage of this game, it would, uh, an advantage, if this game had a log, it would help. Where your character noted down, like, I pulled so many levers in this area. And then you'd know, like, oh, I have this many levers to do, and, or something like, you know, this lever activated a panel in the hub area. Just something so that you're not just like, I pulled a lever, the message popped up on the screen briefly, and then I have to remember that. I have the benefit of going into the, uh... ...log. Which I'm pretty sure is a feature of GZ Doom. If I wasn't playing on GZ Doom, I would not have that benefit. You would just have the message as it popped up briefly when you're playing the base game. Perhaps I'll be able to formulate my thoughts a bit better when I get to the end of it. Some of the areas in the previous levels were annoying. The uh, Guardian of Steel, reminded by this texture, was in particular a bit annoying because was was, was rather annoying because of the way the levels laid out, <laughs> and you had to sort of oh I can't even remember do things to open up areas and some of the switches like. They did things, but the game didn't tell you they did things, and it was just like, oh, I'm pulling this lever, and I can keep pulling it, and is something happening? I don't know. 
If the game mentioned something like a wall has moved somewhere, or a wall has moved to the south, then that would help. Anyway. Hexen 2 is better. I have played a bit of Hexen 2. Uh, I mentioned it last night. I was looking at it. And it is quite like Quake. Uh, which should be fun. And also it has the uh, Tome of Power, which I really miss from Heretic. Pardon me. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just going to take a drink. No, oh, my tea went cold. Anyway. Um... But yes, the bit I played of Hexen 2, uh, just wandering around the first area because I didn't really want to you know, spoil too much in it, um, did put me in mind a lot of Quake, obviously because it's on the Quake engine I believe, or Quake 2 engine maybe. But, uh, what was that say? Mech just tasted an Afrit's fire, okay. There's a HD mod for it. Ooh, I might actually look into that because while I got the game running, I, I used... Oh, what was it called? There was a thing which I actually downloaded to uh, get it running. I'll just have a look to see what it was called. Something of Thorgar or something like that. Uh, do I have it listed here somewhere? Hammer of Therion is what I used to get it running, because as long as the gameplay is, you know, pretty much similar to how the game originally worked, I'm fine with using a mod to make it run better on <laughs> modern systems rather than trying to get it run on the base game. Also the niceties. That's the one? Right. Okay. Good. This room is proving to be quite annoying, especially because I ran, uh, I, I am out of healing items. Perhaps I could have done that boss better. Oh well, it's all a learning process, and the boss was fun. Oh, careful, after it. But yes, the bit I played of Hexen Two, I played briefly as a crusader and as a paladin yes there is actually four classes in uh hexen 2. that's something to look forward to i don't know which class i will play as there's as i said there's the crusader there's the paladin there's a necromancer and there's an assassin so crusader is fun hmm the crusader is armed let's see uh, I tried to remember the weapons they had. The... I can't remember what the Crusaders... The Crusaders' main weapon was a hammer, wasn't it? That was a bit easier to use than the punching gloves of the uh, Paladin. Especially against the spiders in the beginning. And then the uh, Crusader had the... Uh, had the ice staff as, as his secondary weapon. Which was useful against the skeleton archers. Paladin had his punch, has his gauntlets to punch things, which was a bit, you know, I mean, it's like the warrior in this, <laughs> and, um, his secondary weapon, I think, was a sword. I died soon after I picked it up, so I didn't get to have a good look at it. It's hard to fight melee against a skeleton archer. <laughs> They're so fast in the draw. All their classes are okay. Yeah, I mean... I kind of wish I could play through this game, but do one hub each as one of the different classes. Something, but you have to play through this game linearly. Uh, you have to play through this game with one class, because there's things which rely on having done things in previous levels. So, I don't know. I would like to show off the other classes. Um, I don't know what I'll do for that. 
I might do an episode where I just like do a brief bit as one of the classes, as the other two classes, something like that. <laughs> okay, the stairs arise from below. No, oh, we're over here. Hello, yeah, I see ya. He was so eager to get shot by me, he dashed into my shock. I have two hit points. Please don't open and have like five serpents there. Uh, right. Is that it? I think there's more to this level than just that. No, there's this here. Oh, hello. Okay, another area has opened up. Uh, that creature just spawned in. Ooh. I've said before, I wish the uh, centaurs and slaughters looked different. That was a problem I had with Heretic, where they would have enemy variations, and they would look exactly the same. I prefer if they looked different. It just helps with, like, threat evaluation. I feel it's a bit of a courtesy, rather than being jumped because, oh, I thought that was just a normal one. It means you just treat all creatures as, like, the uh, higher level one. Even just changing the colour. Yeah, I mean, they wouldn't have to do much. Maybe give these uh, slaughters or whatever golden armour. It wouldn't be that much different. Just something to differentiate it. The problem was Heretic. It wasn't so much of a problem in Heretic, actually, because the changes were... It didn't mean as much? It only happened, really, with the uh, smallest creatures. Or with the lowest level creatures, like... The gargoyles, and then you had the fire gargoyle. Or imps, as I kept calling them. I still think imp is a better name for them than gargoyle. But the fire gargoyles throw fireballs at you every now and then. Whereas the basic imps just charge you and claw you. It's like, okay, big deal. The fire gargoyles are slightly tougher. But overall, you know, the change is so min minimal. Like, that's a centaur, but... The change between a centaur and a slaughter is kind of more important because the slaughters shoot at you and their shots move very fast and they hurt a lot. So, I feel it would be more important. I died because I got squished against the wall. Um, I feel like the distinction there would be more important. That death was like build engine doorways. <laughs> Uh. Anyway, I don't. I try not to rant too much. Um, it's not ranting. It's the crit. It's, it's critiquing the uh, game's design choices. And just like if you have, you know, different creatures, they should possibly have a different appearance. Oh boy. How am I going to do this? Oh, actually, yes, I could do that, couldn't I? Uh, so let me give some health. Let me just save. I do have lightning, though. So. I like how the lightning pushes them back, too. That's nice. Yay, green mana. That's much better than what I was trying to do. Uh Oh, there's a portal back there. Okay. <laughs> Look at these walls go! I like how you can see it moving on the map. <laughs> this level, this game's actually had quite a few uh, interesting, like, moving traps and so on in it. There was another area with walls which were constantly shifting, like a maze with the walls moving and you could get squished between them if you weren't careful. Okay, that's an Ark of Death. Uh, 
And there was also push walls in one of the area earlier levels. Ah! Oh, wizard! Which amused me probably far too much, but... Yeah. Like, are these all centaurs or are they slaughters? I don't know. The difference is not just the attack. Slaughters have more health. Anyway. I have to assume that the developers thought that by having them look similar would create more of a challenge, but there I'm afraid I'm going to have to disagree and say that having them as a different colour helps, just helps the player. Having them the same colour, or the same appearance, just hinders gameplay. <laughs> razza, razza, razza. Um. Ow. Okay, there's a bunch of portals in here. Hello, wizard. Poof. It's a wizard's courtyard. Ow. <laughs> the wizard shots. I enjoy their uh, spiral attack. It, it's very interesting, and oftentimes I end up getting hit by shots, which I don't anticipate, just because they manage to shoot them in a way where they dodge the... Uh, obstacle I expected them to get caught up on. So, the boss actually had an attack similar to that. The, like, spiral wave. Interesting. They're not much of a threat on their own, but, I mean, it's kind of, it's unpredictable. Which kind of ups their threat rating without really doing too much major. Uh, what were the wizards like in Heretic? I think they just had a three shot spread. Which was nasty. Okay. I teleported. Uh, send me back. Okay, the other portal over there just sends me back. Oh, let's just go out there to attack them, or something. It would be easier. Yeah, I can use your frozen buddies as shield. Ow. <laughs> Heretic also has etheral enemies, yes. That was a mechanic which I quite enjoyed in Heretic. Uh, the Etheral enemies added a little extra bit of depth to enemies which would otherwise be exactly the same. It perhaps didn't have as much effect on the gameplay as it could have, because the vast majority of weapons you used were magical. And Etheral only is affected by physical attacks. Uh, for people who don't know, uh, in Heretic, there are a number of enemies which are ghosts, or they have ghost versions of them. They will be slightly transparent. The two major ones were the Golem and the Undead Warrior. For the Golem, it will... Uh, yes, like the crossbow, only the middle bolt will do damage to them. Yes, because the other two outer bolts out of the three bolt spread are physical. What was the difference with the uh, Etheral Golem? Was there a difference? I think it fired... I think it was just like a Nitro Golem. It just fired shots, but it was Etheral as well. The Undead Warrior, actually, is more different because it only fires the Red Axes. Uh, normal Undead Warriors vary between Red Axes and Green Axes. Red Axes being a more damaging variant, which travel in a straight line and deal a lot of damage. Or, well... They just deal more damage. It's like 50 hit points on hard, on very hard. But uh, for the Etheral effect itself, self, uh, it meant that some 
I'm gonna die again. Uh, some enemies, when they're ghost or etheral, uh, physical attacks will go through them. So if you're attacking, if you're attacking them with like your staff for some reason, I never use the staff in uh, Heretic <laughs> for good reason. I mean, anyway, um, or you were using what was else? The crossbow sometimes, like the outer bolts, as was mentioned, would pass through etheral targets. Uh, the Iron Mace, I believe its shots were physical, so they passed through, but I never really used the Iron Mace because it was kind of a wonky weapon. <laughs> it just wasn't as useful as it could have been. I always had a problem with it. It was too random in its effect. Uh, what else? I think the Phoenix Rod shots were physical, so they would pass through other units as well. The mage is also in that. The uh, Disciples of Despairal, when they're shooting their bolts, they flicker in etheral and physical, which meant that sometimes your shots, if you were using the Phoenix Rod, could actually pass through them. It was interesting, but you didn't. As I said, the, the whole ghost etheral thing didn't really have that much of an effect on gameplay because, for the most part, all your weapons were, were uh, magical, so you could just really ignore it. The biggest difference was the Undead Warrior, which meant, oh, this is an Undead Warrior and it's a ghost. That means it's firing red axes, which means two of them hitting me could kill me. That was a big deal. Other than that. Anyway. Okay. There we go. Uh, but yes, it would be neat. It would be neat to perhaps see something like that in Hexen. I rather liked the idea of it. Though playing as a mage, again, the uh, I assume the effects of it would have been extremely minimal. Because Heretic 100% staff only run. Ugh. <laughs> I like Heretic. I don't want to hate it. The staff is essentially punch in Heretic. Uh, it's a bit more than that, but not much. Uh... I wouldn't actually be able to finish the game. I wouldn't be able to do 100% staff only run, because even when you use the Tome of Power, which powers up the staff, funnily enough, it gives it, uh, it gives it a blue glow around it and a pa more powerful knockback. It doesn't actually count as magical. So I wouldn't be able to kill etheral units, etheral, etheral enemies with it, because <laughs> I wouldn't have any, ether I wouldn't have any magical attacks. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, as I said, the, uh, power, even the powered up staff, I, pretty sure doesn't count as magical. It just has a more powerful knockback on it, so if you hit an enemy with it, it pushes them back more. <laughs> the staff does has that have that for it. You know, if an enemy is all up in your face, you could like knock them back with it a bit, but imagine doing Molotors with the staff. <laughs> you get that close, the Molotor just charges you and slams you into a wall and you're dead. <laughs> now, a gauntlets of the Necromancer run. That would be more doable if you could somehow divvy your, uh, or Iron, Iron Lich, I think, Iron Golem, Iron Lich, yeah. Um, I don't know whether the staff has a high pain chance, whether you could stun enemies with it, but the attack's so slow, it's like the punching doom, it's like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I never use the staff. That's a lie. I would use it occasionally on the first level to mix things up when I'm batting imps or gargoyles around. Just because they're so weak. They fly at you in melee, so you just like bonk, and they get pushed back and keep flying until they hit the wall. Uh, Gauntless and Necromancer would be a bit more doable, perhaps. A bit more. You'd still be in melee with a Molotor, but the uh, Tome of Power for the Gauntless and Necromancer was a life drain, which was really cool. And you're shooting lightning from your hands, which is pretty cool. Staff only run, so I could use the fire staff. Oh, the phoenix rod. Interesting. Hmm. Is there any other staff attack, staff weapons in Heretic? There's also the, um, plasma gun, which I think counts as one. The, uh, L staff, is it called? No, it's called the rod. Yeah, the, uh, phoenix rod. Yeah. Well, I mean, what is a rod but a shorter staff? <laughs> Technically, it's a staff. It's just, you know, a bit deficient in length and girth. 
I got a health staff. Yeah, the health staff would be it would be better. Though I think you only get that later on. So you would be without for a bit. I wouldn't actually do any of this. This is just this is just I don't know having fun with thought ridiculous thoughts in my head. Uh, don't no one get your hopes up. I did 100% playthrough of Heretic on the very hard. <laughs> what more do you want from me? I like that game. It's fun. Uh, but yes, the Hell Staff is like the plasma gun, and the Tome of Power ability of it is a like Hellfire Rain, which is quite cool. Right, I, was I missing something out here? I keep going around and around in circles. I get distracted. Uh, no, is that all? Let me check. Here we go. Death Wind Chapel. Despero with staff. <laughs> I don't think you'd be able to do that. I mean, you'd have to like anticipate where he's going to be <laughs> and hit him and time your attack. I think you'd have to swing before he appears in front of you to hit him in a split second. He's actually in front of you before he teleports away. And all that time you'd be having to dodge the other mage attacks. Anyway. Uh. <clears throat> Oh, they're called Dark Bishops, not wizards. wizards. Okay. Da, da, da. Okay, okay. Crystal Vials, mana from the post around the perimeter. Behind the second stone door, there are a few Dark Bishops and two Crystal Vials. The most important, a Crater of Might. Oh, okay. So the reward from this was a Crater of Might. Yay! Okay, well, that's just a secret level. So, we actually finished that. That was a reward. I wish Hexen had more weapons in it. Only four each class is kind of lame. Uh, it's, it's kind of disappointing. Anyway, going back. I've gone over this earlier in the video, but I want to go over it again. If he has certain spots he teleports there to, then you could anticipate and be ready for it. Yes, you could. This is with Despairal. Uh Despairal is the boss of the third episode in Heretic. He is the penultimate mage in that game, and you defeat him <laughs> with two episodes to go in the expansion. Um, his attacks are primarily a magical bolt, which he fires straight at you, summoning two mages and teleporting. The teleporting he does, the more the lower, the faster, the lower his health gets. And eventually, it becomes basically, he appears, he either casts a spell, or he basically instantly teleports away again. You can see my video on it on my YouTube channel if you want. <laughs> I forget which episode it was, but it was most frustrating. It took me about an hour or an hour and a half to actually beat him. I think about an hour, because <laughs> I kept dying. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this thing here. This planetarium doohickey thing here, it's a bit covered up by scorch marks from the boss fight, but the first part of this uh, whole hub and the side areas was collecting these gems and obviously putting them into this. One of them, that red one over there, was already in it. The other ones I had to put in myself. The first two I put in, the green one there and the green one up there, I put in fine. Uh... Looking back on it, I must have just gotten lucky when I put them in. <clears throat> However, I had three other gems, two blue and the red, in my inventory, and I was trying to use it on them, and it wasn't using it. So I thought, maybe I use them somewhere else, because it said, this isn't doing anything here. I assumed this entire thing was just one big panel, which, if you go up and press use, it activates the whole thing. Turns out, that is not the case. There's little holes in it where these gems go. In fact, it turns out you have to actually look at the hole and use the gem for it to actually go in the hole. I have issue with that. That seems to be needlessly pedantic. And especially because when I tried to use the gems when I wasn't looking at the hole, it just said, this doesn't seem to work here. I assumed the whole thing wasn't working that way. Like, it didn't work like that. They have to actually look at the hole. Which I assume means that the base hexen actually allows her mouse look. 
because otherwise how would you put it into that one when you're looking when when you're stuck on a horizontal plane uh i don't know maybe it's split up into like thin lines and each of these lines actually like, extends from floor to roof and you just have to line yourself up with the hole with the hole to press it like if i was here i could use it and go in the hole I think they used paged up and paged down. Well, that made, that made me use my Wings of Wrath. But anyway. Uh, I saved when I came out of that thing, didn't I? Yes, I did. I think I did. Yeah, I have three craters of mine. Okay, anyway. That's my issue with that. I had to actually look at the holes to be able to stick the things in the holes. Where I thought maybe I had to put them somewhere else. Ah, that was, that was annoying. I had issue with that. Anyway. Harsh critique over. Let us continue on. Because that's actually the end of the uh, third hub. The mightiest weapons and artifacts of the ancients barely sufficed to defeat the High Heresiarch and his minions. But now their foul remains lie strewn at your feet. Gathering the last of your strength, you prepare to enter the portal, which leads from the Heresiarch's inner sanctum. Above you, the ramparts of an immense castle loom, silent towers and bare walls surround a single spire of black stone, which squats in the centre of the castle like a brooding giant. Fire and shadow twist behind gaping windows, dozens of baleful, baleful eyes glaring down upon you. Somewhere within, your enemies are waiting. Ooh, so epic. You killed the guy from Heretic after you killed the Sparrow. Uh, the Heresy Arc. Uh, yeah, he does show up in, I think, the last cutscene in the game. At the end of part five, I think. It's like this evil red, red sort of demon with robes on. Maybe? Aww. This is uh, Korax talking to us here, the big villain of the game. He taunts us at the beginning of every hub. My minions smell your blood, mortal. This game has leaderboards? <laughs> I, I, I'm not putting my score in. Okay, are you a statue? <laughs> I would dominate your leaderboards. <laughs> what's that? What's that thing from Futurama? <laughs> I just have to... Sorry, I just thought of something. Uh, uh here we go. <laughs> if we hit that bullseye, the rest of the dominoes will fall like a house of cards. Checkmate. Sorry. <laughs> I'm Zap Bradigan. My book, Zap Bradigan's Big Book of War. This would be some hacker there with max out score in first, first, in first, second playtime. <laughs> yeah. It always puts me off on leaderboards when you're playing games online. I'm just like, why bother? <laughs> you're never going to be number one. Number one's got like, you know, four million points when the next highest is like, you know, hundred thousand or something it's just like i'm sure some of them get it legitimately <laughs> legitimately um the uh i think you get some of those high scores in uh like orcs must die i have to assume sometimes there those are things that just like someone's managed to i think there's ways you can get the orcs to like bounce from trap to trap basically indefinitely and it just racks up points that way Ooh, nice sky. Just flashes of lightning in the sky. I don't see why people cheat and stuff like that. I don't know, it's just... I don't know. I suppose it's maybe like posting first on forums. <laughs> or in threads. But... Uh, <clears throat> or maybe... Uh, uh, I don't know. They're probably able to justify it somehow. Oh, the game let me do this, therefore it's the game's fault, because if they were smart, they wouldn't let me do this in the first place. You have guys like Billy Michael, who failed his scores from Donkey Kong Arcade. I remember reading about that, though I never really followed that whole thing, but yeah. Hmm. 
that was like wasn't there a book or a movie or something called that called like the king of kong anyway those older games are kind of fun to play because they kind of play indefinitely but some of them just get messed up if you play for too long i think pac-man does that you play for too long and the inter integer overflows or whatever and the levels just start getting impossible but there is like a limit to the game but king of kong movie right it's actually pretty cool mm. well worth a watch hmm perhaps I kind of missed uh, arcades. I mean, there's, there's kind of arcades around. I think there's one near where, like, near around here called uh, Time Zone, which has been around for ages. Well, <laughs> I used to have birthday parties there when I was in primary school. Uh, I think that's still there. Oh, we've got these uh, stone pillars. But yeah, that was really my own arc only arcade I ever went to. The only other time I play on arcade machines is when I go to like PAX. They have them there. Where did those guys come from? Oh, well there they are. Sorry, I want to get rid of these guys first. They're being sneaky. Okay. Come on. There we go. Okay. Oh, there's a switch there. So what's this place? Castle of Grief. Ooh. It's a foreboding name. Now that looks cool. Let's just admire this level design for a bit. I mean, admire. What is it? it it's just a simple castle, but I like it. It looks nice. Uh, I kind of wish, as I've said before, I kind of wish Doom had a bit more stuff like this. If there's one thing I like in Heretic and Hexen, it's the sort of thematic design of the levels. Like, this is a castle, you have to get up into here. There's little, you know, alcoves in the walls where enemies shoot you from, and these towers, and this moat here, and the drawbridge. I, li I really like it. Doom is more realistic levels. Well... <laughs> Modern? I mean, <clears throat> I think the Doom levels are better for, like, speeding through, and the flow of them is better. Uh, however, I've always, I kind of feel the Doom levels for the most part are more abstract. Or, I don't know, it's just different level design philosophies. So, perhaps saying that these are better than the Doom levels is a bit far, but... I do think the, uh, style in Heretic and Hexen is, uh, better than the style in Doom. Style being specifically, like... You know, looking like something. The theme, it's the future and kind of meant to look like something real and futuristic. Sure. Quake Castle was a gothic castle levels. Yes. I mean, Doom has that whole sort of descent into hell theme where the levels later on don't need to make sense because they're in hell. So why does hell need to make sense? <laughs> um, I have heard people say that they don't really like the Doom 2 level design, like the city levels in that. I never really thought about it too much to have an opinion on it. Um, but... Also, I suppose understandably, the Doom and Doom 2 would have been made on an earlier version of the engine than Heretic and Hexen, so I suppose they would have been more restricted on what they could do. The levels in the first episode are doing really good though. Yep. I would agree with that. Good level design. I think they have good flow. Ah. Slaughters!
I would have liked the uh, reward for that secret level to be more of a, um, what's it called? To, to be more of like, perhaps a, a, a urn, a mystic urn, rather than a crater of might. I mean, I already had two. Favorite Dune levels E4 M2 Perfect Hatred. Probably earned a good reward by now. Oh ha ha! I had like eight urns, and I used them all on the boss. <laughs> uh, I feel I certainly could have done that boss a bit better. Now, as I mentioned, Mystic urns are a full heal from a full 100% health when you use them. Or a hundred health. Because I don't think you can actually go above a hundred in Hexen. Can you go above a hundred hit points in uh, Heretic? Maybe? Maybe not. I don't remember E4 M2 though, Perfect Hatred. I would have to look at it to remember it. I've played Doom, but perhaps I haven't played as much of the base Doom and Doom 2 game as I should have. I have seen some good wads though uh, for Doom. I saw, I found one wad which is actually kind of like a Quake inspired wad, uh, which was quite interesting. There was another one, uh, I forget what it was called. It was something about like, your character's been having dreams and Elder Gods have started trying to achieve what doom, what, what the, uh, what the, um, legions of hell were unable to, and your guy's having bad nightmares, and he goes to sleep and wakes up in this other realm, I forget what it's called. I like the design, simple and compact at the same time, and has a hefty challenge to it. Let's have a look. Uh... Perfect hatred. Oh, it's a uh, Saturn level? PSX Saturn level. An E4 M2. Uh, do I have any screenshots of it? Sure. It's in Final Doom. Right. Yeah, okay. Oh, I see. Yep, I was just reading it wrong. E4, M2, Perfect Hatred. Map 25 in PlayStation Saturn. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. It apparently took the shortest time to finish. He started working on it at midnight and finished it at 6am. So six hours it took to fin make the level. Do I recognise it from the screenshots? Maybe. <laughs> as I said, I haven't played as much of Doom and Doom 2 as I should have. Perhaps, but... Where are you, you big serpent? There you are. Oh, I just skidded down those levels, like... Hey, 10 hit point run. What's it called, though? You know, the only hit point that matters is the last one. It's not like the game's any harder on 10 hit points than it is with 100. Just means you can't afford to get hit. Optimism! You just have to step your, step up your game. Sure, yeah, just don't get hit. What's it? <laughs> just don't get hit for hit. Uh. Uh. Ah, 
And no, despite saying that, I would never play through Demon Steel with one hit point. <laughs> Uh, I'd maybe try it on a map pack which isn't Scythe 2, but not on Scythe 2. I get hit far too many times in that to even consider doing that. In Hexen 2 you have different life depending on which class and you get more when you level up. I did see that you had stats in Hexen 2. When I brought my inventory up it showed me stats like agility and strength and all that and I was like ooh what's this mean I haven't looked into it any further I kind of want to leave that until I play it at some point so kind of like learning things as I go which maybe is not the best for a stream but hey we can learn together and that's fun at least I think it's fun <coughs> damn it See, look, I'm in Crater. Yay! Just one hidden in the corner there. Yeah, look at how fast those bolts move. I wish I could tell the difference between a Slaughter and a Centaur. Courtesy game, courtesy. What did I say earlier? Just don't get hit. <laughs> Just don't get hit. It's so simple. Oh, I got hit there. Yeah, one hit point. Now it's truly, you know. Just don't get hit. <laughs> Dude. There we go. That's the best way to play games. <laughs> uh. What is playing games without a sense of, uh, you know, without a sense of challenge or impending doom? Well, fun if you're playing with cheats. Game FAQs on second monitor. <laughs> My second monitor is taken up by OBS and the chat, so. If I was doing that, I wouldn't be able to talk to all the lovely people who joined me. Um, but I do look at the wiki. I will say that. I do tend to look at wikis, uh, mostly for information about level, whether I miss something. However, I promise you, I do not uh, like... I will look up things if I get stuck on them for a while, but I won't like, you know, try and spoil where secrets are or the like. So. Game FAQ has been around for freaking ages. <laughs> I remember using that for games. And it would be like, oh, okay, well, out of all of these text files, which one am I going to read? And I tend to stick to the one which has the largest file size because it would mean that it's the most extensively written. <laughs> um, or it was written by someone who didn't get bored and stopped by like the fourth level. My lightning is like likes being attracted to bushes and trees. I suppose that's not too surprising. <clears throat> right, okay. Is there any health down here which I can pick up? I just keep dying over and over again. I remember playing Morrowind back in the day and had my no internet. I had to find a certain cave and spent several hours trying to find an entrance. Yes, I don't think I ever had that much difficulty finding things in Morrowind. Uh, I think for the most part I found the directions the game gave you pretty good, as long as you stuck to them literally. Like, if they said it's kind of to the southeast, you just headed straight southeast from where you were. <laughs> you had to be like very precise like that, I think, in some cases. Uh, I do think there's maybe one or two situations where the game is sort of Oh, it's off in this direction, and it's like further than you'd think. Thanks, Ed. Yes. There's one quest where it says the cave is somewhere on the slopes of Mount Cand or something. Um, hmm. 
Right, let me think. Any idea of which the quest of what uh, group the quest line is from? Is it from the main quest? Is it from maybe a temple quest? Or a mage's guild quest? I think it's for the Mayrune's dagger quest. Okay. Hmm. Uh, it's been a while since I've played through Morrowind. I do know sometimes there's one in the main quest early on and it's sort of like I think it's for like the Mages Guild <clears throat> which you tend to do during the mages uh, during the main quest if you're a mage because you're like because Caius Cassandras is like you know you need to up you need to increase your uh, what's it called your disguise go join one of the local guilds and do some quests for them to improve your alibi and like okay and it's like this mage in this cave has not paid their due, so I want you to go and kill them if they're not going to pay their due. And you have to like, and then like, it's up the road, over the river, past Fort Frostmoth, and you just keep going until there's like a fallen log in the path, and it will be a bit further beyond that. And those instructions are good. It is exactly where they say. You just have to sort of trust that you know just follow the road and it's like take the left path and you're like okay oh the staff uh, the staff is located in the cave of asu on the slopes of mount kand northwest of Molagma. if you look at your paper map you'll find mount kand in the lower southeastern corner of the island quickest route route is to grab a silt strider from bomora to saran and on to Molagma, or use a guild guide to travel to wolverine hall and cast a gnome cb intervention spell from there yeah right I don't know if I ever really did quests in that area. Hmm. I should do a playthrough of that game sometime. Do like Morrowind, especially for how broken you can make things. It's fun. Alchemy in that game is so fun. It's just like perpetual intelligence. I do like the example you, I did. It made sense and you have to think a bit. Yeah. I mean. As I said, that what that example, which I'm pretty sure it's close to what the game actually says, it's like it makes sense. Um, I think there's another one where you have to go and find some creatures which have killed some gua. <clears throat> I think you get it when you're in old rune or something, and they're like, uh, "There's this herd of gua which were killed by something. Go and kill the creatures which did it." And they're like, "Travel east from old rune or wherever," and uh, and it's like. You'd think it's in the Ashlands area around Eldroom, but it's in fact across the mountains in the swampy area, and it's closer to like, uh, what's that, what's that town near there? Like Hla Oad or something? And it's like, really? You just find some dead, you just find some, like, dead guar on the ground. And you're like, oh, this is where the quest is? And it's like, across a mountain range to get there. And it's just like... Well, it's through one of the Foyadas. The, uh, ash. The, uh, lava channels. Anyway. And that one I found myself tripping up a bit on sometimes. Because I'd forgotten how far it, was, far it was. I was like, is it talking about that? You'd think it's, like, related to La Oad or uh, Caldera because it's closer to those cities in Old Rune or wherever you get it from. Anyway. <clears throat> I keep dying here. Let's actually focus for a bit. Yes. <laughs> It's funny how I can go down to the kitchen, look around, for, cannot remember what it's supposed to do. But can remember the names of towns I visited one time in a game I played 20 years ago. <laughs> I know. I'm kind of scared by my ability to uh, remember this, remember most of the names of the cities in Morrowind and where they are. As well. Maybe that's just because it made such an impact when you had to like walk to the cities or whatever. I don't know. Damn it. Oh, I just use an icon of the defender. Yeah, like I need to use that. I mean, it will protect me from these shots. Oh, 
all these fletchets and I don't use them. <sighs> ah. Things you discover by yourself leave a much bigger impact than a cutscene will. I did like the uh, sense of exploration in Morrowind, something which I missed in uh, Mor in Oblivion and Skyrim. Morrowind, especially with the loss of Levitate in uh, Oblivion and Mor in Skyrim, Levitate was very important for quite a few of the uh, hidden things in Morrowind. You'd be like in a cave and you look up and you just see like, I don't know, a rock up there and you're like, I'm going to levitate up there and see if there's something there on the off chance there is. And lo and behold, there's like a magic shield up there and you're like, wow, my levitate spell paid off and I found something which the game's never going to mention to me. I really like that about Mor Morrowind. And hidden things all over the place. Yeah, some of them were like, oh, it's a crappy magical magical axe stuck in a stump. It's like, hey, it's something to find. <clears throat> hey, health. Okay. Also, the way that you could break things in Morrowind easily. Break? No. I'm not going to say break. I'm going to say, like... Get lots of money. I don't like how in Oblivion and Skyrim it kind of restricts you from making a lot of money early on by, I don't know, doing smart things like breaking into a nobleman's house and taking all their silverware. Morrowind, you can do that. And you're like, I broke into this guy's house and I made off with like four bottles of, you know, Cyrillic brandy and they cost like 100 or 200 gold each to sell. That's a fair haul. And that's pretty damn impressive, and it makes you want to break into other people's houses to steal their stuff. Oblivion, you can't really do that because everything's leveled. It's a little better in Skyrim, but it's still disappointing when you break open like a hard lock on a on a uh, on a jewelry box, and you find a piece of like flawed topaz, and it sells for like 20, 30 gold. <laughs> Like, why am I doing this again? Why why do I bother doing this until um, until I'm like level 30 when I'll actually get good stuff? But by then it's not really any use because Ow. Stupid faces. <laughs> they shot arrows at me. Because by that point I already have good items, so thieving doesn't mean as much. Or the house in Belmora where you can go in there and um <clears throat> And you can take over the house essentially because the guy who owns it is dead. And you can just loot his entire house, sell everything and use it as your base of operations by dumping all your potions and scrolls on the floor. <laughs> uh. As well I always do anyway. Free house! No one's got to go in there to check. No one owns it! It's mine! I call dibs. I'll buy these 100 arrows from you, paying 80 gold and I'll sell them back to you at 120. Good deal. There was that in Morrowind. Uh, they, you did, like, you didn't make much profit from selling stuff, but some of the items were just worth so much, like, you could get pieces of ebony armor at level 1, uh, if you knew where to look, and they'd sell for, like, 600 gold, even at a, even at a merchant which dislikes you, just because they tend to sell for, like, 2,000 gold, so, you know, even with the markdown, they still sell for a fair bit talking about Morrowind when I'm playing Hexen, but I just keep dying over and over again, so. <sighs> kind of want to do a stream of Morrowind sometime. It is a long game, though. I mean, that's not a bad thing. Hmm. I'll have to think about it. Maybe I'd do Daggerfall beforehand. I watched a video a while back where you looked up relics and how they were devalued over the games. In Morrowind it was 100,000. Oh crap. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not focusing. <laughs> uh, in Morrowind it was 100,000, it was down to like 10,000 in Oblivion and Skyrim it's like 3,000. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. <clears throat> it's I think it's too controlling on the uh, developer's part to control the flow of the gameplay. Because they, you know, it's like they want you to be, they want to be sure that you have like so much gold or certain items at certain levels which 
sure makes sense from a gameplay perspective because it means the game is always going to be a challenge but at the same time it kind of devalues player progression because uh, any progression the player makes is <laughs> not going to be as meaningful anyway or it always feels like it's got the developer's hand in it so it's like oh well you know you found this Magical item, well done. You're not going to be too powerful when you use this. Anyway. <clears throat> Oblivion was the worst. I put off Kavach battle for ages. Yeah. Skyrim, I like Skyrim better than Oblivion because the leveling in that game is not as bad. The leveling item, it, item leveling and creature leveling is not as bad as in Oblivion. Came back at level 30 and the place was full of high-level Dremora and instant killed everyone. Poor Martin, he just keeps dying over and over again because of... What's it called? A... Dremora or whatever is nibbling on him. My biggest issue with Oblivion was how they leveled... Uh, basically everything. Specific examples. There's two suits of armor which you can find relatively early on in the game. One of them is held by a character called Umbra, Umbra? and is a full suit of ebony armor. The other one is a suit of glass armor which is blue in color and it's actually ancestral armor for a quest line. Now you might think going into the game, oh this is ebony armor from Umbra, if I kill her, which is quite difficult to do at level 1, I'm going to end up with a powerful suit of ebony armor at level 1. You succeed in killing her, and you find that the, le the ebony armor she has is leveled. So at level 1, it's about equivalent of iron armor, which to me is terrible. You go through all the effort of killing her, which is not easy. And your reward is leveled armor, and it's just like, ah, oh, why'd I bother? The game's controlling it so much. Right. Sorry. I said I try not to rant too often. Criticisms in gameplay design. Let us use a better title for it. In ranting. It has a purpose. You met the thief on the bridge, and if you meet him late game, he has full daydream and still wants 50 gold to let you pass. Yeah, I don't have time for you. Don't walk away from me. Uh. I mean, hmm. That was a bit ridiculous. In Morrowind, you tended to have, like, Ashlanders who were always wearing, like, leather armor or furred armor. And it sort of makes sense because they're not really going to have access to good armor because they're, you know... They live in the uh, Ashlands, and they sort of live off the land and all that. Oh, put cogs in these. And we have a clock here. Interesting. Oh, those are hands are actually uh, sticking out from the clock. I can't actually jump in there. Interesting. Hmm. This game's got a number of interesting little details in it. I saw a mug crab the other day. Terrible creatures. I steer clear of them. Uh... Everyone knows the quotes from Oblivion to Skyrim. Oh! Oh, I just opened those. Okay. I'm thinking, do I actually have four of them? No, I don't. I just opened those. Right, yeah, look. There's a symbol above them for which one goes where. This one goes in here. Here we go. This is clearly labelled, game. The planetarium thing was not clearly labelled. You could have improved upon that. For some reason that cog thing reminds me of Lands of Law. I get what you mean. I haven't played Lands of Law, but I understand your uh, preference, your your feeling there. <clears throat> it does feel like something you'd see in a uh, what's it called? First person dungeon crawler. I should probably play Lands of Law. I've watched a playthrough of it a few times. Uh, that was made by uh, what was it called? The people who made uh, Commander Conquer. Westwood. Which is quite weird to think of. Yeah, Westwood. <coughs> Westwood Entertainment. Mm. Green ammo. 
Right, I've gotten two cogs down the bottom. The other cogs are probably up on the ramparts. Now, I only have to find a way to get up there. Well, how are we going for time, actually? 2.30. I've been going for a bit longer than I planned. Uh, hmm. I was going to do some Hocus Pocus Doom after this. But I think this has been so enthralling. Narrated by Patrick Stewart. I wouldn't actually know that. Possible. Did he play the king in Lands of Law? Hmm. I just remember uh, Lands of Law having a... What's it called? The four-armed guy. Baracus, I think it is. I, I appear to be back. Yeah, Bacasa. That's it. Baracus. Isn't that the name of the warrior in this game? <laughs> yeah, I think it's Bacasa. I, I don't feel too well. Uh, I have been playing more first-person dungeon crawlers. Um, I don't have too many. I have so many CRPG games. All the gold box. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons CRPGs. And I still haven't finished the first one, Pools of Radiance. <laughs> They're fun. They're unforgiving, though. It's that old school sort of... Ah, oh, that's what I missed. It's that old school sort of... You went into a room! There's like four trolls and one ogre, and you're level three. <laughs> Good luck. Or, you went into the tavern to get a drink and perhaps rest. A tavern brawl breaks out, and there's like 15 rogues and like 20 archers attacking you. White Magic series. I have played bits of that. Um... Might Magic 3. I've tried to get through. <laughs> I don't know. I don't find it too easy. Uh, I like the ideas in it. The concepts are fun. And or finding all the levels. and uh, Finding all the items and all that. But I don't know. I'm not sure what keeps putting me off. That's an interesting game because it's sort of like you struggle at the beginning and then you just sort of get overpowered and start stomping everything <laughs> until like the last part and then things start stomping your return. But there's like little middle ground. What do what these switches actually do? Because I've been pressing them and balance is a hard thing to get right. Yes. Do these teleport? No. Okay. keep moving around until a wizard dislodges himself and decides to attack you. I have to be careful to miss those uh, spikes popping out of the ground. If I get hit by those... Oh, I think something opened up in the middle here. If I get hit by those spikes, I believe they're an instant death. Because they squish me. Somehow. I'm kind of surprised by that, actually. They're not a solid object, they're a sprite. Can sprites deal damage in Doom? Oh, there's a cog there. Cog. It's cog, it's cog. Uh. Oh, they're firing all different types of shots. Right, let's use a crater crater to get my ammunition back. Uh, still nothing there. Probably just a tile that is set to damage at certain times. Oh, right, yeah. <coughs> you mean like, uh, there's a square there where that is. Can't see a square on the minimap. That would make sense. It does state change when something dies on it. They get blood on them. Ah, here we go. Now, which is the one I got? I got the full brown one, didn't I? Yes. This one. 
I don't know whether that opens up another area when I put one in. I may as well do it though, just in case. Hmm. There we go. Let's have a look at the map. Uh, anything I'm missing? Where is that portal at the back there? I never went through that, did I? Is this the third hub? Oh, there we go. Okay, I see. No, is this a fourth hub? This is quite an extensive uh, hub area. Yeah. Is there no levels which branch off from this? Oh, well, I guess that answers that. There's a Forsaken Outpost. Now, how are we going? 240. Right, well... I think I've wandered around enough in this area. I've gotten three of the four cogs here. I don't know what that clock does, but... We have another level to go here. And, yeah. I think that will do it for today, for Hexen. Uh, how much time have we got? I might do a brief amount of Hocus Pocus Doom. I would like to do a little bit of that. Right, Hexen Part 5, I'll save there. And, yes, I'd like to thank you for joining me for Hexen. We actually managed to finish the third hub and defeat the, uh, Her Heresiarch. And we've cleared out most of the, uh, fourth hub. Because, I don't know, I got caught up in the game. As I said, I think the gameplay in this is fine. The combat is pretty good, and I like the variety of monsters, it's just the puzzles sometimes are a bit aggravating. Labeling could be better. This cog puzzle is actually pretty good. It at least tells you what cog goes where. Which is good, developers. You should have done that in some of the cases earlier on. If only a panel, which, like, showed where the cog, where, where the lever affected or something, rather than just a message on the screen. Anyway. So yes. I'd like to thank you very much for joining me, and I'll stop the recording here.